Hello. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> I'm not starting again. <clears throat> I'm doing this on a, on a spur of the mo opportunity in that I've been thinking about doing this for weeks. I've been wanting to get on, show you things, say hello, give you all a bit of a catch up. I've missed you guys since the end of April vlogs, but uh, time just ran away with me. You know what it's like when the garden wakes up, it just demands your attention. So I have been furiously gardening and I have to say, it's paying off, it's looking lovely. It really is looking lovely. There's still an enormous amount to do isn't there ever, but I kind of feel like it's getting there. The only problem I'm facing now is here in the southwest of England, we haven't had any rain in ages and I'm getting massive cracks in the soil in my flower beds. So everything seems to be okay at the moment because it's quite well established and I'm keeping on top of anything that's new, but I've sowed direct some seeds and they they're just not taking because it's just so dry so I keep having to go out there and water them and that's a bit of a time commitment I'm in my gardening clothes I have a hole on my shoulder and paint and you lot some of you might remember this skirt that I made it's the estuary skirt can I show you a bit better it's the estuary skirt, I can't remember who that's by, um, but without the button placket and I've just done it to this length. Can I tread off here? Ooh. Here we go, that length. So I'm a right scruff ball. I tell you what, this skirt is lovely. <clears throat> I've still got that horrible frog in my throat claggy thing that I've had since January. Good morning, Bill. Hello. How are you? I'm good. What do you want? I'm trying to record a podcast, Bill. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to stay sitting there? No, I'm going to go. All right, then. To the kitchen. All right, go get yourself something to eat. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. I don't know why I said morning because it's actually 20 past two in the afternoon and I've already seen Bill today but he doesn't like to get dressed if he doesn't have to and I'm the same so he's fine. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah having to water everything. Oh my, my skirt, my skirt, yeah the estuary skirt. Um, it's just out of some old linen that I'd started making something else out of and it just wasn't quite right so I chopped it into an estuary skirt. Do you know what it's not actually properly the estuary skirt because it's um the skirt itself is more of a the panels are cut like this like wedges more more than a Yeah, I just used the waistband. I'm sure I've podcast about it. I know I have. Right, I'm surrounded by stuff to talk to you about. Um, number one is that jumper I was knitting <laughs> through throughout April vlogs. So I started it again because it was way too big let's get it all out so I started it the very very first time and realized I didn't like how the sleeves were being set in so I I've got to work out which one's which now so I started doing um a different pattern called floof by Skeindir Knits and um, it ended up being absolutely, oh look, there's a rainbow on my phone. It ended up being absolutely massive. So I put that to one side and I cast on again. Here it is. And 
aside from the rib on one sleeve, it's completely finished and about to be frogged. <laughs> It's just not worked out for me. I don't think it suits my body dimensions. So I've found another pattern because I've doctored this one as much as I could with my limited knowledge. And I found another pattern. It's by Isabel Kramer. It's called Black to Life or Back to Life. And I think it's going to tick all the boxes and judging by the older sweater of hers that I've knitted before I think it's going to work out okay. Right let me tell you what my problems were. Look I've got a rainbow on my chest. What my problems were. <clears throat> so I'll have to stand up for this. So the problems were I went down to the smallest size and it is still really big the shoulders although this ends where I would have probably would have planned for it the way the sh the arm size increases are made drops it down and I really wanted it about there because I wanted it to look like a fitted set in sleeve so the only way I can think of changing that is to take stitches out of the body, but then that would change the neck. Um, the armholes are just way too low. They need to be, for comfort, about there. So they are an inch too low. Yeah, my armpit is there, so I would have wanted it to, the arm to have started there. But if I'd stopped the arm increases there, then the arm hole, the arm, the sleeve would have been too tight. Oh, coconut, the hamster's awake. He's having a drink. He's very gorgeous. And actually, the arm fits really nicely. I did make a mistake. I put the um I put my beginning of round marker in the wrong place, so this is over by about an inch when it should have been under, but that doesn't matter. Quite like the length, especially with waisted skirts like this or jeans. But there's just there's just still too much fabric here. Look. To get the sleeves where I would want them, I would have to take about that much out, which is quite a lot. And that's just off the front. I think, yeah, there's a lot on the back as well. And since this is the smallest size, there's no more sizes I could try. Um, I don't want to moan about this pattern, although it sounds like I'm moaning about the pattern. Um, because I don't feel that it's the pattern's fault. I feel like it's just the way my body is. Now, my body is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with my body. But when it comes to things like dressmaking, I don't know what the problem is, but I often do have issues across the front. Things don't sit nicely fairly often. So I don't I don't know what that is about me. Okay, the neckline on this is um it's quite high, which is okay, but it's higher than I would have really liked. And the back, now I haven't done as many rows as the pattern says but the back feels like it comes up really high even though I doctored all the short rows 
so that it didn't come up even higher. But look, you can see it doesn't fit right. Look at this, all of that there. So if that gets smoothed out, look how high up my neck it goes. It's just, it just doesn't fit me. So it's getting flogged and that's okay because I enjoyed knitting it. It's a shame I haven't got something to wear at the end of that, all of those hours of knitting, but I still enjoyed the knitting. So it's not time wasted. It was time spent doing something I was enjoying. It's just a shame I don't have the jumper. Doubly a shame because I'm nearly finished with, Margot, stop digging. If you've never been here before, Margot's my, where's she gone? There she is. Move that plant out of the way so you can see her. Margot is my poodle and she's a pain in the ass. But we love her. That's my chair squeaking. So my plan with this jumper and this yarn, which one day I will finish and I will talk about in its entirety, was to take these woolly mammoth minis and a couple of other ones I've got in yellows, golds and orangey brownies and embroidered flowers and I just thought that would be lovely absolutely lovely uh so it's 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 a shame really that it hasn't all come together because I have almost finished the socks I wanted to knit with those minis first I won't go into detail about these now because I've still got the heel to do on this one like you can see I've got my forethought line in there none of the ends are woven in and I haven't blocked them and I, they're going to need blocking because I'm not very good at changing yarns at the sides. So they're going to need a block. Oh, now she's rootling around in her bed. Stop ticking! So next time I come, these will be finished. This will be frogged and I hopefully will have started the back to life sweater by Isabel Kramer I'll um try and link all of this below if I forget anything and you go to look for it then just send me a message and I'll update the the show notes that's what they call them isn't it the that was my chair again the thing that I do like about this pattern I really love that I just think that's really lovely shame about the humpback Oh, Timmy's awake now. Look, Timmy's the other hamster. He's just lovely. He would let me pick him up, but coconut jumps about, so you've got to be very specific with coconut. Yeah, just sitting here now, I can. Ju I just feel like there's just too much fabric. There's this is too low. This there's too much here, too much there. It's just wrong. But I do really like that detail on the shoulder and that is just really good and it was an extremely well written pattern so don't let it put you off knitting it because everyone's got different bodies and I've seen all of the projects and nobody else seems to have the issues that I've got now I've either read the pattern wrong which I don't think I have I've knitted enough to be able to spot where when I reread through a pattern where I've made a mistake. So I don't think it's a fault in me reading the pattern. I also don't think it's a fault in the pattern. I think it's just incompatibility. I've been in the garden all morning. Did I tell you that? And I cannot believe that I've still got nails. I mean, they're dirty, but I can't believe that that they're hanging on. Do you find that your nails go through phases where they're just strong as anything and then other other times they just ping off the whole time? I do. Right, I'm going to have a lovely time unravelling that one later and unravelling this one. God, what a shame. I've basically knitted two jumpers and neither of them fit. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say is that 
you probably won't be able to stay, see on film and especially because yet again I have just sat down with my phone and not my fancy camera because my fancy camera I'm just not confident with it and I think it makes all the colours look a little bit funny it makes my hair look orange which is lovely but it's not real and I'd rather present myself realistically um yeah and I just I haven't given it the time and attention that it it requires for me to feel confident at changing things like the white balance and the aperture and things like that but what I wanted to say and this is why I was going on about the camera is it's a shame I'm not recording because you perhaps won't be able to see on film the difference that blocking makes to these this one's been blocked and it is it's slightly paler now and it's so soft and the stitches are all even and they look gorgeous and this one is unblocked and it is rough it's not itchy it's just rough which I don't mind and the stitches are pretty uneven and yeah it's just been transformed one of the things that I found because this was yarn from a cone was that the cone towards the middle was so sort of tightly wound that there was no stretch left in the yarn and it was um, flattened. I don't know if I can... It's imperceptible. I won't be able to show you on camera, but you can feel it. You can feel the difference in the spring. <clears throat> Does anybody else know, get this thing where you just keep getting a, a crackly voice? Which I can't stand because it sounds like vocal fry and I really dislike vocal fry. <laughs> I know we all do it to a degree, but I can't even listen to anybody or anything where the majority of their speaking has got vocal fry. So I'm struggling with myself. Right, put those down, Gaynor. You can unravel them now. That'll be nice. Uh, nothing else in there to talk about in that bag. But I do have more things to talk about in this bag. I've shown you those socks. I've got another pair of socks. Now, these socks, this has never happened to me before. Let's pick up something I've dropped. This has never happened to me before, but I've had, um, my tension has really changed. And I think it's been because of that jumper and the fact that that yarn didn't really have any stretch in it. So this is my first sock. I'll just show you the tension first and then I'll go and wrap it on about everything else. Is it showing up that this one is wider than this one? Same stitch count, same needles, same yarn, finished this sock, cast this sock on, knitted this sock concurrently with, with knitting my jumper. So if I was out and about or waiting for the little boys at football, I would be knitting this sock. But look, if I put them together, put the soles together, Look at that. Can you see? It's like four stitches at least more narrow. Look how pointy the toe is compared to that one. And of course, I can feel it when I put them on. I can definitely feel it. And I don't like it. I don't like having one sock feeling funny. But the one thing I have noticed is I do like the tighter sock. I've got long, flat feet. So quite often I find with my 64 stitch socks that on a 2.25 needle that they, they can kind of start getting a bit baggy and then they slip down my foot. So I'm wondering if 
this will just hold on to my foot, especially because it's rib as well. If it'll hold on to my foot nicely, because I still need the length. This is why I don't fall over much and why I'm very good at hugging. I'm extremely stable, sturdy on my feet. <laughs> Not mentally stable, but stable on my feet. I think no, I don't think anybody's mentally stable these days. I think we're all bonkers, which means that we're all actually normal. So normal is unusual these days, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Right. The yarn is from Lay Family Yarn. It's the Chartreuse. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Colourway in their, it's Yak. Silky Sock Yak. I want to say, I know I haven't got the ball band. No, I don't. I did have it. What did I do there? I've made such a mess. I'm always in a mess in here, but I'm in a particular, particularly bad way in this room at present. It's it's on their website. Yak and silk and nylon. It's a sock yarn. It's luxurious. I do still want to start using more yarn that's less processed um but i've just got i've got a cupboard full of um traditional style sock yarns so that's just gonna have to come in time but i've got some organic non-superwash yarn in exactly the same color from kelly yay lay family yarn um who dyed these if I didn't say already, lay family yarn. Um, I've got that waiting in my cupboard for a jumper. I'll talk about that when I when I do it. So when I finished these socks, because I'd been loving the yarn so much, I decided that I was going to knit one of Meg from No Frills Knitting, which is a shop in Bristol. Um, I was going to knit one of her shopkeeper's friend's hot water bottle covers. This pattern is on her website, on her blog. I will link it down below. Look, isn't that lovely? Isn't that just so cute? She just does a plain one, but I thought, oh, this is looking a little bit plain. I'm going to do some moss stitch so what i did was i did a row of pearl a row of knit then i started my moss stitch and then i did a row of knit a row of pearl and then i continued and it's lovely how it's made it's actually quite funny because i oh i should have brought it with me ages ago i made a little gray hot water bottle cover to go on a tiny little one like this and I actually did exactly the same as Meg did here and from what I understand is she made it up out of her head as did I but even down to the number of stitches we did the same number of stitches so it was actually really, really validating that she's such a good knitter um, that I'd kind of stumbled across the same thing Oh, I'd done it the same way myself all those years ago. What I did though with mine was I did a one by one rib, same stitch count, and that, and then I folded it over, and that was what gave the the neck here. And this is where this one is so clever because she does these shoulder decreases, which is just so neat, and then increases here so that it is form fitting and then this i cord bind off it would look so much better if i had a different color hot water bottle in there an i cord bind off which kind of hugs the top i think really i could do with undoing my i cord bind off and doing another couple of rows before binding off because mine seems to pull down like that i think that's probably just a tension thing but it's not really a big deal is it but I love this, absolutely love it. I'm just picturing myself when it's chilly again. Although I did get cold outside, it's really sunny, but it's super windy. 
with my socks and my hot water bottle. I look a bit blown out. I'm sorry about the colour. It's just I'm in my sewing room and, the, and I'm in front of a light and it's just how it comes in. And the dog's trotting around making annoying noises for anybody wearing headphones because she wants to be fed, I think. Are you coming up? Say hi. Come on then. Come on then. Oh! Here she is. You sweet girl, aren't you? She left home the other day. Don't know how she got out. Don't know how she got out. Don't know when she got out. I've got a feeling that Bill might have let her out by mistake. Anyway, my neighbour brought her home. Luckily. <clears throat> there you go. I think that's all my knitting. That's all the knitting I've got to show you at present. I have some sewing now and then a little bit of a update on chickens. And then I'm gonna go because I really need to deal with this hell hole. It doesn't help that I had a birthday and, which is lovely and People who love me are so sweet that they give me presents, but then I've nowhere to put anything because I'm already full to the brim. So it takes me a while to find homes for stuff. So I've just got piles of stuff everywhere. <laughs> anyway, knitted, sewn things. I have been sewing for a baby and the baby was born on the Saturday. And at the time of podcasting now, I don't have to keep it a secret because it's been announced on Instagram. But my lovely, gorgeous, no longer pregnant friend, Bex, from um, Bex Creates Podcast, has had her little precious, perfect baby boy. So, oh God, and he's so scrummy looking as well. He's absolutely delicious. So I've made him a little, little baby romper suit. Bex chose this fabric when we went to a shop in Bristol called Like So Amazing. She chose this fabric and it, this is it's such a cute little pattern. It's, it was a freebie. I'll um, put the details below if I can find them again. Unless I've got the pattern there. I'll put them below. Uh, I stalled on making this because I put the poppers on wrong. I put them on correctly now, but I put them on so that they were fastening up like that. And then when I tried to remove them, I inevitably wrecked the popper placket, if that's what it's called. But these poppers are really good and really sturdy and very easy to put on, but they are almost too poppery they're really difficult to pull apart so you have to get your nail in there and then snap it open so i'll have to tell bex about that i'll have to say look go easy because otherwise it just stretches out and tears a hole in the in the, in the fabric where the popper goes through but um this the little baby can't remember if she announced his name I'm pretty sure she did but just in case she hasn't I'm not going to say his name here you'll have to go and have a look on Instagram Mrs B Diddy she's private but if she can see that you're a knitter or a sewer or a crafter and that you follow other people she knows to be knitters crafters she'll accept your request it's because she's a teacher so she's she's got to have that level of privacy um Yes, he is the going to be the best handmade dressed baby in the world. Bex has knitted, I don't know how many hats, how many little all-in-ones, romper suits. Friends have knitted cardigans. Her sister Claire has knitted this cute little thing with a little bare face on it. There's just, <laughs> he's just so loved already and he's got loads of stuff. 
So I've I've um, sewn this in uh, three to six months, and he was a really nice size baby, seven pounds something. So hopefully three to six months, that'll fit him. Where will we be by then? So let's pretend we're in June now because we almost start June. July, August, September. Yeah, autumn. So that's that will be a nice little outfit for for probably an Indian summer. Then I sewed some stupidly cute. Oh, oh, my chair. Look at these. Oh my gosh. And I loved sewing these. I just did everything on my normal sewing machine with a zigzag stitch and um, I haven't overlocked the edges or pink and sheared or done anything. So although they look a little bit sort of untidy, they're so soft, so soft. And that's all I'm interested in. I would rather that the baby is comfortable in his clothes than to have a garment look really refined and polished when it's inside out. And then let's just face it, he's probably going to put these on, poo out the side of his nappy. He'll only have worn them for five minutes and they'll be in the wash and then back on and, it, you know, and babies grow so quickly that, that they'll only be in rotation for a few weeks. But they are unisex, so you could put any kind of breed baby in there. <laughs> Look at how sweet those little feet are. Oh my gosh. It's funny to think, because these look so tiny, but it's funny to think that if he was to wear them now, it they would swamp him. So those were another freebie, I think, that I found on Pinterest. It's the, I don't think it says on here. Oh, it's by Vagabond Stitch. They're called Footed Pants by Vagabond Stitch. Footed Pants. And then lastly, I've not finished these, but these are, uh, these are by Ray, made by Ray. Made by Ray. And they are Ray's basic baby pant sewing pattern. So, oh, so cute. So, um, what size did I make? Oh, it only comes in one size. So I think that these are probably, again, for a three to six month old. They need a bit of elastic in the waist. I've got oodles of elastic. And I'm going to put some on the leg, in the leg as well, to bunch it up. I just think that would look really sweet. And then if Bex doesn't like the elastic in the leg, if I just leave the channel open, she can just snip the elastic and whip it out. And also if I leave the channel open and maybe do some sort of maybe I could tie, do the channel at the side and I could tie the elastic somehow so that she can tighten it up if it's too loose or or loosen it off if it's too tight as he, as he grows but I think these will be nice in the autumn as well because they're quite lightweight but with a pair of knitted woolen socks, of which I know he's got plenty, and a little cardigan. He'll be lovely and warm, and he's got loads of blankets as well, so he'll be absolutely fine. I've got some fabric left, so I'll make a few more bits. I wanted to make, um, I've got some white fabric that I want to make myself some t-shirts out of. I wanted to make a couple of little baby t-shirts to go with these and with these, so he's got kind of three outfits there and then two of my greatest friends are becoming grannies one of them hopefully next week um which makes me feel funny saying hopefully because the, the problem is um there's a blood pressure issue so the baby's going to come early they're trying to keep him in 
and build him up now but he's he's going to be a good seven eight weeks early so it's um it's exciting to know that he's on his way but it's also a bit like oh he's going to be so diddy he'll be fine though so i've got plenty more fabric left over that i think my friend's daughters would would possibly like i am going to double check because there's no point making something if it's not somebody's cup of tea, if you know it's not somebody's cup of tea. Right. Lastly, chicken update. Last time I saw you all in April, I had got the new hens. They kept as two very distinct separate flocks for about three weeks and now they've merged into one flock and my biggest old hen is top of the pecking order. She's called Cindy and she lays a cream egg. I'll show you this in a minute with all of the others. Um, and she's lovely. Uh, Sunny wasn't very well, was she? My white egg layer. She wasn't feeling very well. Um, but she is absolutely fine. She's perked up. She's completely fine. She started laying lovely eggs again and she's very old. And now she's just decided she's not laying any eggs at the moment. But she's fine. She's chickening around and pecking and scratching and, and chasing off any of the hens that below her in the pecking order and, and she's gorgeous but I don't think I've got her for much longer because she is old and the reason why I say that is because very suddenly out of the blue my red hen Macy who laid a normal chicken egg you know like you get in the supermarket can you hear Margot snoring can she Don't know if it's picking it up. Yeah, she just very suddenly, she just died. One morning I went in and she must have only just died because her head was still falling like this. Bless her. She was a lovely, lovely hen. So she's gone. So now I am worried because they are old. My old hens are old. And, and quite often with hens, because they're prey animals, you just, they go so quickly. Sometimes you get a bit of illness and you know they're going to go and then sometimes just they're just gone. And Macy, all I can say about Macy, all that had happened was she'd laid what I call a fright egg in the middle of the coop, which she never did. She was very particular about where she would lay her egg. Same spot every single time. Um, so she'd laid this fright egg. It's almost like someone had said boo and it f shot out the back. But it was perfect egg and fine inside and then the next day she laid what I call a fart egg because it looked like she'd fart and farted and surprised herself and this tiny little egg came out absolutely tiny and then the next day she was gone so that was sad but two out of three of my new hens are laying Judith who lays the olive egg she lays one Ever since she started laying, she's laid one every single day. And she's very cute because she kind of burrows when she goes to lay an egg. And then eight days ago, Love Day laid her first and second egg on the same afternoon. How weird is that? One was like that and one was just a bit bigger. And then eight days later, she laid her third egg. So let's hope she doesn't wait another eight days. So out of, I've got five chickens. And I'm only getting three eggs very sporadically because Popo, one of the new chickens, she's not laid at all. She's going to lay a chocolate coloured egg, but there's still time. She's still young. So I brought to show you the eggs. However, I ate this one this morning. So it's in half. So that's Cindy's egg. So that's a normal size 70 gram hen's egg and it's cream. Sunny usually lays a white egg. That's Judith, so a little bit smaller, an olive. And this one's Love Days, which is again smaller and a lovely blue. Oh, look 
can drop these everywhere and get in the right mess, aren't I? Hang on. Here we go. So once I've got brown eggs and white eggs in the mix, if Sunny ever lays again, I'm going to have a collection of pretty eggs. I have got a new hen on order. She's just another normal, I think she's a... I don't know, I don't know, I can't remember what she is, but she's just a normal supermarket egg layer. She's on her way at the end of June. But they all settled in really well, really well. There's been no aggressive hen pecking. Um, I put out loads of water, so they, they everybody had a water station. I put out loads of food stations, so there was no squabbling over one food station. Cindy would chase off the new ones from whatever food station they were on, but she couldn't patrol all of them, so none of them went hungry, so that was all very good. Right. I'm sure I have more to talk to you about, but I'll just have to come back sooner. I meant to come back sooner, but I, I got very, very occupied with the garden and with life, um, the kids are just at a really busy phase of needing ferrying about everywhere. I'm in between drop, having dropped off Wilfred at a friend's house and about to pick him up again. We're in half term now, um, so it's going to be busy. Okay, have a lovely time doing whatever you're doing and enjoying and um, hope if you're having a bad time that it passes very, very soon. Um, and I have nothing else to say. I'm waffling, so I'm just going to go. Thank you ever so much for being here. And I'd love it if you enjoyed your time with me. If you would consider subscribing, because I know that only about 60% of the people that watch this are actually subscribed. So I'd love it if you would consider that. It doesn't cost you anything and you won't get loads of notifications from me or from YouTube. And, um, yeah, press the like button and leave me an emoji comment or something, you know, all the usual, all the usual stuff that everybody says. It really does help. It's really encouraging. It very much encourages me just knowing that you're there. So I thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Oh, I didn't say what my name was or anything. Oh, I'll do that next time. It's not important information, is it? You want to know where I got all my sewing patterns and my knitting from, don't you? My knitting patterns. Okay. Shut her up, will ya?